Hello, welcome to Living Hope, where there's always hope with God. Uh, with me today is Mike Packey, and we're going to be covering the Digging Deeper study in Acts 7. Um, we're glad you're here. We want you to continue to join us online. If you can share these posts and, and encourage your friends to like and follow the page, uh, we believe the Word of God is getting out, and uh, it just creates an opportunity for more people to be used and more people to be touched. So uh, we would love to have you guys join us. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, we also need your input. So when we ask the questions, please respond. And all you have to do is put them in the comment section of this post. It really does help us all out. Also, um, if you have suggestions, you can send them to the Living Hope page privately in the inbox. I would love to hear your comments and suggestions privately. Uh, how we can improve. Because we always want to... Um, we always want to grow in the things of God. Also, I want to share this. We're not asking for tithe to so much to benefit the church, but we recognize that there's a lot of people out there that don't really have a place to tithe, and they're not living in obedience in that area. And when you're not living in obedience in that area, we limit what God can do. So if that's you out there, um, you can go to the donate section of our church page and you can donate following our website at livinghopeanza.com. So with that, you want to pray us in? Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to um, just dig into your word and learn more about who you are in us and who we are in you. Lord, we just ask that you guide us through this study and open up our hearts and our minds. Let us receive what it is that you're trying to touch our hearts with. And Lord, we just ask that um, you open up the hearts of everyone watching and um, just let there be inspiration for growth. And um, Lord, just continue to guide us each step of the way. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So for sake of time, I think we're just going to, we're going to go straight to the digging deeper notes and go from there. And, um, and we do encourage you to interact this this gives us an opportunity to really know where you're at and um and w this helps us all grow okay so we'll start the story of stephen really starts out in Acts six where in verse eight he was performing great wonders and miracles it was not stephen himself but the holy spirit an argument takes place and they cannot resist or win the argument over Stephen. They incite people to come against and seize him. One thing about apologizing, which means to defend the faith, is that we do not need to get angered or even frustrated if others do not agree. Stephen presents the facts. Now in verse 1 of chapter 7, the high priest asks if these things are true. Without context, we could we would miss the big picture. Chapter and verse breaks were added later, but sometimes we miss the idea conveyed by those breaks. The same thing happens if we take ideas out of the passage. Do not compare them with the whole Bible. The question is, how can we stay connected to the big picture of the Bible? Well, I think the first thing is prayer. If we continue to pray for guidance and um, direction, discernment, ask, ask the Holy Spirit to just really reach into our hearts and, and into our minds and help us to understand what it is we're reading. So once again, the question is, how can we stay connected to the big picture? Looking at scripture, looking at life, how can we put it all in context so that we're not myopic, focused on something so small that we miss everything else. So that's the question. How can we stay connected to the big picture of the Bible? And when Kevin says the big picture, you know, first thing it reminds me of Jack Ednoff. That's why I put it that like that. And, and the big picture, Jack would always say, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is talking to us. We have to... We have to 
clear our minds. We have to give room for the Holy Spirit to speak. And when I say make room, we have to get out of the way. Amen. Amy, by engaging in studies like this, amen. Yes, this is this is very important. You know, and, and, and we have this this technology that's available to us today. And you know, with with all bad things, God could turn them around for his good. And with this COVID, which really instigated us and inspired us to reach out through the internet even more, um, we're reaching more people this way. And, and it's not us, it's God working through us. We can stay connected to the big picture by reading commentaries and looking things up in our core concordance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cindy, by listening to the Holy Spirit. Yes, listening to the Holy Spirit. How do you hear the Holy Spirit? Oh, come on. There's one. You know, we we can there's there's radio waves and there's there's TV signals going all the time that we can't hear unless we tune in. We have to have a tuner. And and that tuner is our desires. We have to replace those desires of what we are accomplishing on our by ourselves and we ask to be those to be replaced with the desires of the Holy Spirit, the desires of God. Amen. And uh, then we start tuning in. We have to listen. By seeking to have a, de a deeper relationship with Jesus. Yes, it's all about Jesus. And, and I think it's important to, that we... Amy mentioned something that's really incredibly important. Um, by studies like this, what we're doing is we're getting different perspectives on the same issues so that we can see a bigger picture or a more clear picture. Um, oftentimes, the reason why I put that in there is if we look at chapter 7 without seeing chapter 6, we're going to miss the whole point. We need to look at the Bible as a whole and not just a, a particular book or a couple verses so that we don't miss the big point. Yes, Cindy, we have to be hungry for the things of God instead of the things of this world. Yes, and the things of God, what are the things of the things of God that we can be hungry for? Love. The, the fruits of the fruits of the spirit. Come on. Love, peace, joy, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self control. Yes. Amy. We can stay connected to the big picture, the big picture in worship. Yes, where the word of God grows roots in our spirit. Ooh, yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's amazing. Amen. So we're taking on the question, how can we stay connected to the big picture of the Bible? How can we can stay connected? So here's a good point. So we can stay balanced in the right way. I'm not talking balance between you know, living spiritual. I'm talking a balance between what the Bible has to say in the big picture rather than um, so focused on small points that we're missing the bigger picture. Yes, and you know, to, to really get connected with God, the first thing that we really have to understand is grace and forgiveness. Ooh. We can't approach Him if we have... <clears throat> um, if we're, if we're not ready to forgive, he forgave us. And by that, we have the opportunity to go into the holiest of holies, which there's oh. that veil is torn now. So we can approach him directly. I want to address that. Amy says lifestyle worship. Here's the thing. Can you imagine just trying to follow what the Bible says without connecting to God in worship or in praise. Think how rigid and hard that would be. The Holy Spirit helps us put everything in the context of a personal relationship with God with passion and motivation through that aspect. Do you want to get Samantha? Yes, Samantha. That's why reading the Bible through the year helps because you get a little taste of everything. Yes. My only question, my only comment is reading through the Bible in a year is that we want to make sure that we're reading, we're reading the Bible to take it in as spiritual food, not try to accomplish a task of getting through it. And so uh, I would also tell people, take, us, 
take a look at the books, take a look at other things. Because I know people that their whole purpose was to get through the Bible in a year and they didn't retain anything. We want to make sure that we're retaining and, and, and hearing back from God as we read. And, and you could look at that. That's why reading the Bible through the year, throughout the year, that's, that's reading it every day. Ooh. Um, my wife and I, we start off every morning with daily Proverbs. You know, it's the same <coughs> 31 Proverbs every month. And, but sometimes there's something that jumps out at us um, this month that didn't last month. Ooh, amen. So it's, it's a living word. But that, that doesn't take away from not reading the other parts of the Bible because everything from Genesis to Revelation is important. But I'll tell you, everything that's in that book from the beginning to the end, Jesus said, I am the beginning, I am the end. Ooh, come on. Everything in that book is about Jesus. And when we, when we take um, that into consideration, we're looking at the creator of the universe. Amen. And, and we're trying to uh, understand where we're at in his will. And, you know, in, in each one of us are different, and, and which is why interacting in these kind of studies is very important because because we're so different when we when we look at we put on somebody else's glasses we see a little differently Ooh, good point we have a different perspective each one of us has a different perspective on the same issue and and it can help us grow and see more about that particular subject let me catch this one Living the Word brings context into the lives of others. Amen. Letting them read the Word through us. That's what that was. Go ahead. You want to get some at this? No way. You couldn't. This, his Word makes you jump and shout. Like Jesus said, even the rocks will shout. Yes. Woo! That's right. <laughs> Amy, context comes to live, to live inside of us through obedience. Ooh. It Ooh. does. And go ahead. And when, when, look, what you said earlier, Amy, about uh, worship, you know, it, it gives us, when we're, when we're singing worship songs, um, we're, everything about us, we're praising God. And when we're, we're praising God through worship, it's, it's like double the dose. Ooh. You know, we're singing, we're praising Him. And, and whatever the song lyrics are, those are being shouted out and prayed. And There's two things about that. And it, Oh, man, this is good. First of all, um, you said living the Word. Well, living the Word brings the reality of God into our lives. Yes. So instead of just thinking that God is real, we're living out His Word in the way we um, conduct our lives. So it becomes a part of us. It becomes a lifestyle. When we sing scripture, when we sing God's word, aren't we doing the same thing? We're worshiping the we're worshiping and using the word to to connect us to that truth and to the passion and to the desires, so it becomes powerful. Woo! And and powerful singing those praises. You can see, you can read in the Bible about how singing those praise songs stopped armies. Ooh. Ooh. It killed armies. It Come defeated on. the enemy just by singing. The enemy flees when we are singing praise songs. Ready? Yes. This is how I fight my battle. Yes. You know what? That's right. You want another one? I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's right. Amen. And I'm, I'm getting the chills about Ooh. that, you know? Oh, that's like that singing a song and then doing a devotion like Sunday. Oh. Or a uh, testimony. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. You know, when everything that we do, all of our actions and, and everything we do, um, we're doing unto the Lord. Amen. We, we, we don't just look for opportunities to share his word and to uh, praise him. He sends us opportunities Ooh. all the time. Do we recognize them? Not all the time. But we can pray for um, our eyes to be open and recognize more and more what he's sending us. And, you know, I, it's 
what a load off of your shoulders when everything you do is for the Lord. Amen. Let's, let's stop right here. Father, we recognize that your spirit is doing a great work this morning and that you're touching us and connecting us, Lord, to the living word. Yes. I pray that you would increase that in what we see, what we hear, what we know, and what we feel so that we can experience more of you right now. And Lord, thank you that we're, we're sensing a great movement right now this morning. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You want to get to the next one? Okay, we're going to go move to the next question here. Stephen quoted from the Old Testament in answering the high priest. The Old Testament speaks about Jesus. The Apostle Paul quotes from the Old Testament in several of his epistles. He instructs and rebukes those who are bound by the law. In 2 Timothy 3:16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Even though Stephen was filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit, he needed knowledge of the word to refute those who were in opposition. I have seen this throughout my ministry. God has had me read scripture and I got very little out of it, or I had no understanding of what I read. Later, I had an encounter with someone have to put the scripture into our minds and the Holy Spirit will draw it out. If we do not, if I do not read and study the Bible, I do not give the Holy Spirit anything to work with. When we read the Bible, it should not be a bunch of random passages, but a systematic study through scripture. Systematic means acting accordingly or according to a fixed plan or system. There are two ways to implement this as a devotional meeting, allowing God to speak to us on a personal level, and the other is for, the, for study to gain more knowledge for the purpose, like teaching. In both cases, we need to be intentional in our reading. The question is, what current reading plan do you have? How can we be of help? Mm. Mm. So... It was the study or the knowledge of God's word. And in, to Stephen, it was knowledge of the Old Testament. But it brings us to the point, this point. Do we systematically study God's word? Systematic means to have a plan. So many people read randomly that their faith is random. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So... If the Word of God is so powerful that even the Old Testament without the New was good for correction, for reproof, how much more should we not read all of it in context? And then here's the thing that helps with us. What current reading plan do you have? I know for me, I, I generally read books of the Bible and chapter at a time. I'm currently in Romans. But uh, what reading plan do you have and how can we help? Do you have any thoughts? And we're taking on the question of that. What is your current reading plan and how can we help? Well, like I said earlier, um, we start our day with daily Proverbs. Um, this, this is a simple um, way to start a new... Um, if, if, if you're just starting and you want to be obedient and get into God's Word, if you want to start a new... Uh, devotion. Devotion. You just read daily proverbs. It starts you in a new routine. That's the word I was looking for. And you get in the routine of getting up. The first thing you do and get up and you start into God's word. You might have to get up a little early. And we do that. And we love it. It's quiet outside. We breathe in. And it's we don't have the world's um, chaos in our thoughts yet. So we start off with daily Proverbs, prayer, coffee. You know, coffee is part of it. But <laughs> and Before you get to that, my, what Mike's talking about is he usually picks, and, and if you read Proverbs, this is the general plan. What day is it? Today is the 20th. The 20th. So I would read Proverbs 20. 
Yes. So there's 31 Proverbs. Proverbs. There's a proverb for every day of the month, uh, except on certain months you can read two Proverbs right. that day. But anyways, that's the systematic reading that we're talking about. And then also we have um, a couple of devotionals that um, one of them, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young and, and Jesus Always mm. by Sarah Young. And, and one of them, it, it says a scripture and it gives me an opportunity to look up that scripture and then we read it. I'm, I'm getting the uh, opportunity to know where the books of the Bible are at in what order. So, and then the other one, and we, we just continue to do that. Now, Amy, my reading plan consists of reading devotionals and reading the Word every morning. Oops. Ah, oh, just a minute. Let me go up. Let's see. I don't know why I'm not getting it. I'm sorry. I touched the wrong thing there. <laughs> Let me try to get it. Just catch the other ones and I'll go back. Okay. There's Carrie. So I would start that. I used Carrie. I use the Bible app daily. Others challenge us to systematically go through subjects in scripture i challenge others it's accountability encouraging and becomes a huge desire to seek more of god's word maybe physically alone but with others wherever they are yes uh, amy's my reading plan consists of reading devotionals reading um in the Word every morning, too, I listen to the Bible tape as I fall asleep. Amen, that's a good point. I fall asleep in God's arms. Also, all of these studies are so helpful. In addition, choosing to do a kingdom training. Amen. We're trying to get Dan Robinson there, too. And leading a Bible study has, incredi has an incredible tool. You learn so much more when you teach. Hint to others who I am encouraged to do the same. Amen. Amen. Cindy Watson, a daily devotional, Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm and Proverbs, and the devotional with our ladies. You already read that. Deborah Dale. Yes, like the Ethiopian eunuch, his heart was seeking, and he found the truth through his own seeking questions. Then, And then Philip's obedience and understanding of the Old Testament and how it led to Jesus. Amen. It's such a blessing to participate in these studies. It is. It really is because we're getting so much information from you guys. Yeah, it really, really helps. And and you know it it, it also with these kind of studies online where we, where you get to type in your responses, where otherwise you might not raise your hand because you're Ooh. you're scared or something, or you're nervous yeah. about people seeing you. Yeah, and and this this really breaks down those barriers and it's it's a good way to start coming up and 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 uh, learning more and, and in that way i think we're all called to share at certain levels and sharing your faith comes from the ability to understand god's word and really to help others now we do it not for knowledge sake but we're doing to help grow each other's faith and I think that purpose really needs to be laid down as a foundation because if we do it for knowledge's sake, then knowledge puffs up. And we've been in those yes. environments where it's, it sets people to outdo one another based on knowledge. Amy, Debbie and I were just talking about how dramatic our growth has been. Oh, yes, it has. Hey, come on. Has been from being able to participate in multiple studies every week. We don't want them to end. Adding more studies has had a super positive effect. Yes, and, and you know, and Amy, we can really see that. I can see that in you, how you've really been stepping up. It's, it's amazing. And, and you know, it's, it's what a blessing to watch um, our, our brothers and sisters grow. You know, it's, it's amazing. Cindy, 
We have the freedom to participate in these and ask questions without judgment. Amen. Irma, me too. I would not survive without the word of God every day. He is wonderful. The way he takes us, care of us. He takes, takes care of us according to his will. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, yes. Come on. Irma, I just want to share this. You're a blessing. Thank you for being with us as we grow together. Come yes. on. Amen. All right. I think you ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Next one. Stephen shows the flaw of their actions and, and in their lack of belief. He points out that their fathers resisted the Holy Spirit. And now they're resisting the Holy Spirit. History repeats itself. Yes, we can see that in Ecclesiastes. Yeah. God does not change, which is the term immutable. His ways are higher than our ways, but his ways are always consistent. When we look at scripture, we may gain a new understanding of something, but we do not get a new pr program or a new commandment. Revelation 22, 18 and 19 says... For I testify to everyone who hears the word of prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things that, which are written in this book. The Bible is our textbook, our instruction manual but is also a history book. These are real people with the same issues we have now in one form or another. If God dealt with them in a particular fashion, he will deal with us the same way. This helps me to know that God worked a miracle with ordinary people. People like in this passage rejected him and they will continue to reject him today. The question is, what biblical story or history ministers to you today? What are some of the things you are learning from that history. Hmm. Amy. Well, that she just repeated okay. it. Okay. She's putting it out there. So what biblical story or history ministers to you today? What stories of the Bible stand out and really touch your heart? What are some of the things that you're learning from that history? Hmm. Hmm. So... When um, I took a history 101 class in college and the history professor said that our best history is found in the Bible, it shocked me because I wasn't used to hearing stuff like that. The other thing I want to point out is when I look at the Bible, I don't look at it as just stories. I look at it as reality. So when David faced Goliath, this is what I got out of it. David faced a problem bigger than him. But his problem wasn't bigger than God. Yes. And so that's what I learned from that story. No matter what fit problem I face, God is much bigger than that problem. So what kind of stories or history can you see in the Bible that ministers to you today? And what are the, some of the things you're learning from that history? I, 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 Mike said, learning how to worship when we face battles. Oh, yes. Come on. You know... You when, when we praise God in James 1, it says, count it a joy when you go through these trials, you know, because it, the trials are producing patience or long suffering. You know, we're, we're, it's just drawing us closer to um, trusting God more. You know, when we look at the history in the Bible, you know, one of the things that really is standing out to me is Sodom and Gomorrah. Ooh. You know, and, and Solomon says, you know, it just keeps going around and around. What, what's already happened is going to happen again. And we could see that Good kind point. of stuff happening right now in today's um, life. You know, where, where the sexual immorality, the, the killings um, of babies, um, men loving men and women loving women. And, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's become... It's become normal and accepted. That's the worst part about it. Promoted. And promoted, yes. You know, it's, it's, um, it's crazy. Amy, Stephen's marriage 
martyrdom. martyrdom has taught me of God's faithfulness to come up to come upon us to speak his word to others in opposition. I pray to have the same courage as Stephen. Oops. Knowing that God stands with us when we do gets me excited to stand with Jesus. Yes. Yes. David's tenderness and love with Babylon's leader, how he loved him and took care of him despite his sins, led him to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Deborah Dale. Saul was a formalist. He loved the Old Testament. He had outward holiness. He re represented following the law as a way to God. Stephen represented that a sinner can go to heaven if they repent and trust in Jesus. Wow. Yes. And and this is this is right when they're they're persecuting him. They're getting ready. They're you know they they stoned him at the end, but you know they were they were slapping him and they were spitting on him. I'm sure just the same as they did to Jesus. Carrie, Job keeps me grounded in what I think is huge. <laughs> is really nothing compared to others' problems. God trusted in Job's faith. What a testament to his character prior to losing his world. Then to be restored to even more perspective is vital. Yes. Amen. David's courage to take down Goliath. You know, and he didn't even question going up against that giant. Mm. Mm. He, he didn't even, he didn't fret. He already knew God was there. His God was bigger than Goliath. Come on. And the army that was standing there before him, ready to, to kill him. Yeah. And, and you know, David was very young at that day when, when that happened. So this, that makes me look at childlike faith. Come on. You Good know, point. When, when we trust so much in our father... That that we'll jump off the roof into his arms. Ooh, come on, you know we we're not afraid. There's no fear there because of so much trust. Yes, one of my one of the ones I I enjoy. Oh, Daniel said, "Oh, great king, how I wish the message wasn't for you." Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Amy said, "Oh, sorry, I meant Daniel, Amen. earlier, not David." Yes, um, was. When God spoke the dry bones to life in Ezekiel. And it just reminds me, because he keeps speaking this to me, that what we think is dead is not dead with God. It's only dormant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and, and, and before, when, when it's dormant, that means it's sleeping. You know, Sunday's message, it, something that really spoke to me and stood out to me was the caterpillar. Mm, good. The caterpillar, the cocoon, the chrysalis, and the butterfly. You know, the caterpillar spends his whole life looking down and eating, always just thinking of himself. And then he goes into a cocoon, Dead which, sleep state. which is in a, a state of death. Or, or, But then while he's in that cocoon, he's dissolving into a, a new creation, and while he's in there, that's the chrysalis, you know, which is Christ. And so there's there's a picture of Jesus in the tomb and becoming renewed and then reborn into a butterfly. The butterfly doesn't look down. His eyes are facing up. And he's now he's this new creation is going and getting the sweet nectar from every flower. You know, it, it's what a picture. This is good stuff, man. Amy, the king, I forgot his name, fasted the night. He was in the lion's den. Our love and prayers for others who live in sins has powerful resort, re results. Yes. Amen. It was Darius, I believe. Okay. That was Amy. This one? Yeah. Yes, Ezekiel, speaking life to dry bones, definitely inspires me daily. Yes. Carrie. 
<laughs> Bullfrogs and butterflies. Both been born again. Yes. You know, tadpoles. Tadpoles, yes. That, that, that sounds like a, a song from Heart. <laughs> 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 yes, Deborah Dell, godly molecules surrounding our souls are never dormant. Ooh. Yeah, amen. Ooh. That's right. And why, why does that, the dry bones speak life? It's because how many times do we think things were dead and they're not? God could revive them. Yes. I've seen that. I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people go, well, my relationship's yes. dead. There's no hope. That's right. And watch what God can do. Well, I'm homeless. There's no hope for me. That's right. You know, <laughs> I used to be there. But Come you, on. But you know, the thing that I, I wouldn't focus on being homeless, I, I would always say, but I'm okay right above my shoes. Because you know, of God. Because God has me. Woo, this is good stuff. Yes, tadpoles like in my pond, yes. Amen. <laughs> well, well, there's a spiritual party in our molecules when God comes upon us. Hallelujah. Ooh, that's yes. good. That's a song. Yes, it is. <laughs> Carrie, that is a praise song from the 1970s. <laughs> Bullfrogs and butterflies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. All right, we're taking uh, some response to the question, what biblical story or history ministers to you today, and what are the some some of the things you're learning from that history? You know, if we don't learn from history, then um, really we have a problem. It's one thing to be ignorant, but it's another thing to stay ignorant. And part of our um, part of our ability to stay ignorant is not to recognize what had happened and learn from it. Yes, you know, and. and and you've, we've all heard that phrase, history repeats itself. You know, I, I think that if we weren't at a time looking back at where we've been and we only, only looked forward, the, feet, the way our feet are facing, I don't think history would repeat itself if we kept our eyes forward and focused on growth and, and moving forward. But I, I could be wrong there. You know what they say? Hindsight's twenty twenty. It's not if you don't learn from it. Right. All right. You want to go to the next one? Okay. Next one. Stephen pointed out the truth to those who were accusing him. The truth can either convict people or change, to change or cause others to resist. In this case, the not, they not only rejected Stephen's message, but they lashed out and killed him. They could not accurately defend themselves so most likely they operated from emotion. We see that in the world today. Ignorance usually causes people to defend from a place of anger or frustration. It is okay to be ignorant, but it's not okay to stay ignorant. The question is, how can we present the gospel in clarity and reason without getting too emotional? Well, you know, when, when we we get that, that knowledge gets, we get stuck on our, on what we know. Then we start um, focusing on ourself. And if, <clears throat> if somebody tries to point out the facts that are opposite from what we believe, we know, then we, we want to, we don't want to be proven wrong. Nobody wants to be proven wrong because um, they're all puffed up. So that's where humility really comes in. Mm. We, we need to humble ourselves and, and really desire to learn. And, and if we can see that we can learn from others, you know, and, and something that I, I was thinking about last week was, um, you know, we can learn so much from uneducated people. Oh, good point. They sometimes it's the children that that will say something so that profound. It's yes, it is so profound, and and it's that's that childlike faith again, you know, because they're not stuck on themselves. You know, we can learn from people that have nothing, um, and and we could have everything, or we think we have everything, but somebody that has nothing can show us that we also have nothing. Amen. A couple things to read and I get a response. Yeah. 
We can present the gospel with clarity and without emotion by praying before we respond and choosing to respond and not react. Yes. Good point. And that, that's as easy as before we respond, just take a breath. Take a breath. Amen. It's good not to attack people's long-held beliefs. They get quickly defensive and close the doors. It's best to let his light shine. Much more compelling than being pointed out that we are that we are all wrong. Amen. That goes back to what Mike said. Um, something I want to share on this is this. It, you can present the gospel with clarity and truth if you're secure in what you know and you're not worried in what you don't know. Simply say, I don't know. Yes. And the other aspect is if we keep it simple, we go back to the basics. Let's start and stay in the basics as much as possible. Cindy, by realizing it's not about us, right? We can't be offended if we realize it's about Jesus, not ourselves. Woo! That's right. You know, and, and if anybody had the the right to be offended, Stephen, <clears throat> Stephen, Jesus, and, Amen. And those two, they're they're similar. They're like Stephen. Yes. Yeah, he's following it's, Jesus it's like example. Oh yeah, absolutely. Go back to that one. Amy, we need to constantly check ourselves when interacting with worldly people. The results Daniel experienced with Darius speaks life into this. We're countless, there are countless opportunities here to stand out from the world, to be salt and light, and not by reacting, but responding with love. Ooh, that's yes. good. Good one. Okay. So when we look at this, Really, what did Stephen do? Let's go back to the context. Stephen continued to present Jesus Christ, even when encountering opposition that came against him in emotion. He never stopped giving them the gospel with clarity. Now, something I want to, I just was, um, how can we present the gospel in clarity and reason without getting too emotional? You know, it's, it's important that we read the word so that it, it becomes part of mm. us. And, but when we go out and we're talking to others, um, we don't necessarily have to pull out our, our Bible and start preaching from the word. You know, our actions speak louder than words. You know, and when we're, when we're like Stephen, he was glowing. He was, he was lit up like an angel. Um, the light of God was in him and it's the light of God is in all of us so when we go out into the world and we just share that light and that love with others they recognize it uh -huh. they you know the they, they might not comprehend it because they're in the darkness still but then you know I, I was thinking something that you said Sunday and I my response was well well we can sneak up on God and then I thought well, wait God is light. How can you sneak up on light? You can't. It's, it's, it's coming from every direction. Ooh. And we're in the world, you know, where it's darkness. And, and, but we still see light. Well, that's, that's only from the light of God. Amen. When, when all of um, the Christians are taken out of this world, there's only going to be darkness. There's not going to be any light. Amen. But anyway, Deborah and not just try to appear knowledgeable or prove that we are right. It's all about pointing to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amy. So amen. So true. All yes. right. The last one. Okay. Stephen cried out, Lord, forgive them. This is the same statement that Jesus mentioned at the cross. Stephen must have been focused on seeing Jesus at the right hand of God to make this statement. He saw the bigger picture that his life would continue with the Lord. By focusing on our heavenly calling, we can be free from the persecution of the worlds, even in death. The Bible, the Bible does say that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and powers. It is 
also it also states that people are binded and blind. blinded and dead in their trespasses. Proverbs sixteen twenty five. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. They do not understand what they do. We were there as well, but God removed our blinders and enlightened us. We were understanding our, of ourselves, undeserving. undeserving of ourselves, and he saved us, knowing that the basis for salvation is in him. It should give us compassion and motivation for others as well. The question is, how can we show others forgiveness like Stephen? You know, that's, that, that points to Jesus, you know. Amen. Um, forgiveness is, is, you know, it's, it's easy to say, but to forgive your enemies, to forgive somebody that hurt you in the past, to forgive somebody that just cut you off in traffic and now you're, you're mad, you know, forgiveness starts with Jesus. Then it moves to ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to learn to forgive ourselves um, from these past inflictions of pain. Ooh. You know, somebody hurt us, and we're holding on to that pain. You know, and and I was thinking about this. You know, I I was wrongly hurt, and I broke my back through this, and. And I, I seem to like continue to hold on to this pain that my back hurts. Oh, my back hurts. But you know, if I forgave the person who wronged, wronged me, then I think I, I really believe that that pain will go away. Amen. This is from the last one. The more we spend time with God, the more we become like Him, that we feed ourselves nourishes us. What we feed, feed ourselves nourishes us. We have to fertilize our fruit trees and be a living nursery of love, peace, joy, patience, and goodness. Amen. Uh, this was the seed for Saul's conversion. Oh. Stephen's forgiveness. Ooh, come oh, come on. Oh, heavy. <laughs> yes. You know, because they, they were, everybody that was killing Stephen, throwing the stones at him, they were, they were taking their coats off, their cloaks, and they were putting them at Saul's feet, who was all about persecuting the Christians and we and, and we find that all through Acts there was a, a and coming up in Acts 9 um, we're gonna we're really gonna see the life-changing event in Saul's life amen so you look at this and you're going but once again how can we show others forgiveness like Stephen we have to see them through God's eyes and um, the church challenge a couple weeks ago was, you know, two things that I, I need to dwell on the new man. And that is quit focusing on what people's done to me and start focusing on how I need to react to them. And how I need to react to them is the same as Stephen by showing love and showing forgiveness. Think about it. You are being killed and why you're being killed you're showing them forgiveness that is supernatural yeah and, and you know and Stephen said forgive them just like what Jesus said his last breath forgive them for they know not what they do and, and this is what Stephen was saying they're throwing rocks and and we're not just talking about little rocks we're talking about as big as they can kill it these rocks that they can just heave at them and then and they were doing it over and over and and, and jesus I mean, stephen looked up and he, he could see jesus Amen. and he, he just asked them ask jesus to forgive them you know if if you have the mind of the world you're only going to live in the pain of past hurt Ooh. when you have the mind of christ you're free to forgive and bless you are free to move forward with your life, secure in your salvation and hope for the future. Oof. You know, forgiveness is is something that we need to make the choice to do. Amen. Deborah Dale, amen to our reactions, bondage or freedom. Amen. We can show Amy. We can show others forgiveness, like Stephen, by choosing to by choosing to forgive. It's a choice. Daily, take up your cross, Jesus said. Sometimes forgiveness is like this. 
Uh, it's like a muscle that must be built and strengthened by working it out. Amen. Oh, Work out yes. your salvation with fear and trembling, exercising forgiveness, knowing we have been forgiven. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Uh, Samantha, forgiving me, myself is the hardest. Amen. Hi, Lydia. Lydia, what helps me is when I pray for people that I get somehow hurt and pray for their salvation, focusing on God's agenda, winning them to heaven. Amen. Forgiveness takes place in my heart. Amen. Here, we get a message this morning, Kim and I. And, and you know, I just happened to be on forgiveness, um, which isn't, isn't really a surprise because um, that's how God works. You know, he puts, he puts things in our life that um, are right at hand. It says Jesus always forgives, but he never stops with just forgiveness. He gives a radical example when he says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you in Matthew 5, 20, You know, forgiveness, just like Amy said, it's, it's um, something that we need to exercise. And the more we exercise something, the stronger it gets. And the healthier it gets. Amen. Um, and, and we have to exercise our faith and, and believe what the Bible tells us. And, and some of it might be, you might believe it blindly, um, but I'm encouraged to dig deeper and study. If, if you want to um, learn more about forgiveness, then uh, if, if you have a Strong's Concordance, look up Ooh, forgiveness. You, th there's many places in the Bible, I can't tell you right now how many places, but it'll tell you every place in the Bible where forgiveness is um, written. Amen. And, and the thing about forgiveness is this. Um, forgiveness is not forgetting. God chooses not to remember, but we understand that we're flawed. We will not necessarily forget, but what we can do is not allow us to have, not allow it to have control over us. And when we look at people like Stephen looked at them, we look at them through the eyes of God, which means that if uh, he's forgiven me, how can I hold them hostage? Uh, praying that God would heal your heart and transform those. Sorry, when things come in, it comes in fast. And transform those things that you're not able to forgive into who he is in your life. Ooh, that's good. That's Deborah. Then the more our victories in the Lord, the more we become confident in building spiritual momentum. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Carrie, church challenge. I am a daughter of the king. I am loved completely. God doesn't, doesn't ever remind me of my past. I have an Abba daddy. I am vital part of his body. I am enough with the Holy Spirit working in my heart. If I were the only human needing mercy and grace, Jesus would have died for me alone. Yes, mm. amen. Mm. Amen. One of the ones today that I was speaking over myself, I am victorious and I'm a teacher. And oftentimes when I think about being a pastor, I don't think about that aspect. But I'm a teacher because he's given that to me. You know what? Also, I'm a living stone in his, in the spiritual building. So much God has given us. You know, and when you say you're a teacher, you know, actually we, all of us are teachers. Amen. You know, the best way to teach is by example. Ooh. So no matter what, no matter who, we're all setting an example for somebody that's watching. We don't know if they're watching or not, but I'll tell you what, you're either setting a good example or a bad example. And that's that was something that my mother told me before she died. And um, and I don't want to set a bad example. I want to I want to 
inspire others to grow. I want to inspire others to teach others to grow. And we all have something to say, but we all have something to learn. Mm -hmm. And we learn from each others. We teach each other. We lift each other up. We encourage each other. I, I want to add to that. Uh, and it came up this morning in, in my in-person meeting I have with some of the men. And in our John study, the act of church it should be us together. And what I mean by I'm a stone, I'm a living stone, it says in First uh, Peter chapter 2. I'm a living stone in a spiritual building, not made with hands. But the, the church is us being living stones, being connected. What am I doing? He says, you're doing the church to get The church is a team. Okay. Here we are. Hello. There we are. Okay. The church is a team. It's us working together. And the more we can understand that, You know, when yesterday in our chair balance class, we were talking about. Um, I got. It. We were talking about uh, teaching others. You know, we have to. It's important that we recognize where where somebody's at. Amen. We ha and and to recognize that, we have to be genuinely interested in what they're saying so we can hear where they're at then we can we can make a connection the church has left the building <laughs> jim yes that's a good one jim amen yes <laughs> amen amen and you know when you leave the building you know there should be a sign right there that says you are now entering the mission field ooh you know, now is where you meet the, the foot meets the pavement. Oh, you know? yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we just got a few more minutes for response. Um, if you want to, the question, the last question was, is how do we show forgiveness like Stephen? But uh, we can open it up to anything biblical, especially on um, Acts chapter 7. Uh, or if you have a response, just appreciate your involvement with us this morning. And once again, this sharing these posts is a way to get the word out. Yes, if you hit right on the bottom left, you hit share, and then it will come up. It'll say, create a watch party. Hit that. And then you'll start a watch party with everybody that's on your friends list in Facebook. Amen. They, they could choose to join it or not. But you know, it's that's their choice. But we're we're using this this medium to reach all around the world. If you have friends on the other side of the globe, which I do, and I have people that that join in from India and Korea. Amen. Let's get that one. How are we living like we are the temple of God? Ooh. <clears throat> You know, how are we living like we are the temple of God? Are we, are we taking care of ourselves? Are we living, um, are we eating right? Are we exercising? Are we studying? We have, we, there's, there's three areas in our body that we can grow, and it's physically, mentally, and spiritually. And in order to grow in each one of those areas, we need to exercise those. Practice. Practice. You know, we exercise our... our spirituality by faith by by stepping out in faith and and trusting in god um 
getting outside of that comfort zone. And, and Amy, I, you, you are a perfect example of that. Deborah Dale as yes. well. Yes, yes. Terry Crutchfield. Oh, yes. She crushed it on Sunday, right? Um, physically, you know, you go to uh, the gym. Well, the gyms are closed now, but we can, we can still do exercises. We can stretch. We, can... we don't have a gym in Anza. No. Well, we have well, Jim, Jim Orcott. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, right. Yes, and but we 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 can take walks. We can work our uh, cardio and strength. And Ooh. Cindy, physical and spiritual discipline. Yes. Paul said this, and I'm I'm not sure the relevance like what I need to teach on, but it hit me yesterday, and I was looking at it. He said, "I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection." I wish we had one too, Amy. I do yes. the best I can. I do push-ups, sit-ups. I got like a bow flex, but it's not heavy enough for me. I, I'm a weight guy, and it's frustrating. But Paul said, I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection, lest when I preach, I become disqualified. One of the things that I see in the church today that there's so many people that have a lack of spiritual discipline that they never get ahead. Health and wellness room in the church. I would love that. I think we can. Uh, we might be able to do something like that in the near future. That'd be huge. And then to think about it, um, biggest issue to health is what you eat, right? It really is. It you is. Can don't have to work out as much if you eat correctly. Here's temple building room. Amen. Um, here's another thing. Um, what are you taking in spiritually? A lot of times people are feeding on spiritual junk. They're feeding on stuff that's really not solid and basic. Even what they read, they don't read the word of God for themselves. And there, there's a lack of spiritual maturity because of the lack of spiritual nutrition. Amy, or Deborah Dale said, Amy, we talked about these things right before this study. How about that? Confirmation. Thank you, Lord, for telling us without any doubt, when we are all on the right path to you. Amen. You know, another, another thing that um, just came to my mind was home studies. You know, if we get home studies, just just uh, call up a couple of your friends and, and just, like, Acts is a good, I, I think it's a good place to start because it, it's all about life-changing events. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, um, it's something that we can, most of us can relate to, but just um, call a few friends to come over and, and start a small home study. Amen. You know, Amen. there's, we, we find that in, in Acts, that's where um, the church really started is in small groups. Amen. So guys, we only got a few more. We'll just take a few more minutes for response and then we'll pray out. But, uh, Wow, what a good study this morning. Yes. What a really good study. You know, when the church starts looking at the whole body, soul, and spirit, then we're dealing with complete people, and we're not just isolating people to um, their destination. We have to encourage people in their journey, and I think that's huge. If we don't encourage them in their journey, then sometimes life gets so overwhelming they can't see the light beyond the tunnel. And then here's the other aspect I looked at. Um, we really, really, I, I evaluated my life this way. I, I could have had a big house. I could have saved up just for retirement. But if I would have done that and put all my eggs in one basket, then I would have missed out on the opportunity to enjoy life along the way. And oftentimes we're so focused on just getting to heaven we don't live in heavenly realities today and we're missing the opportunity to enjoy that journey. And I think that's what we need to do. Yes, the big picture. Amen. Here we go. The big picture again. Yes, those opportunities to share and fellowship. You know, we could, we could pray and ask God to, to give us opportunities, but even more so ask him to help us recognize those opportunities and then to be bold enough to interact with those and to, to um, work on those interactions. Amen. You know, there's, there's, we have to be bold to get out of our box. Amen. And 
Yes. Amen. Got one coming. We need to focus on getting heaven to earth instead of getting to heaven. True. That's right. The kingdom is upon us, Jesus said. It's within us. It's within us. It's right here. You know, it's right here. You know what? When two people are gathered together, that's the church. Yes. We need to continue to share those things. We got one more. Yes. And then there's one more. Open to God's agenda and take eyes off of ourselves. That's right. That's Lydia. Amen. It, it, it reminds me of something that I have here. Do it. Do it. Come on. <laughs> it's right here. Everybody has an agenda. And, you still have it. And I wrote this. This was back in oh, 2013. This is my agenda. Serve God. Yes, to serve God. What has it done for you over the years? Oh, you know, it has lightened my load so much. But, you know, I, I get to do so much more. It's, it's uh, reversed my aging process. <laughs> It's healed my mind. Amen. That I, I, I used to um, not be able to speak because of a brain injury. And um, I, I couldn't gather my thoughts together. And, you know, just through um, serving God, he's healed me in so many different ways. I'm, I'm so blessed. Um, today, four years ago, I met my wife. And um, this is right after. Yeah, yes. And, you know, God is just moving in our life he's called us to be so much more than we believe we are or that we deserve it's um it's amazing yes. amazing see god is amazing we just need to get out of the way so with that guys we're going to go ahead and pray out uh thank you for joining us we'll yes. be here uh tonight at seven or actually six o'clock for prayer 6 p.m. tonight for prayer, 7 o'clock for topical Bible study. God bless you, and let's pray out. Father, we just thank you for the revelation of your word and your truth. We thank you, God, that you are just calling us up to more. Thank you for blessing Michael so much that he's able to give it away. God, may you increase our value. But it's not so much increasing our value, increase our understanding of your our, our value so that we would be invested. Father, we just pray, like Stephen, that you would help us walk in forgiveness. You would have us walk in spiritual wisdom. May you be glorified. And Lord, I just want to thank you for that term this morning. Wisdom comes from revelation. Yes. And I pray, God, that you would give us more and more revelation. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless, guys. Bye. Have a great day. Chip.